just wait for you to stop wobbling. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and my mama loves you GB here on FlossTube, but also on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday morning briefing. It is Sunday the 10th of March, which is Mother's Day here in the UK, and this is FlossTube number 146. Now it's been quite a while since I've known both of those pieces of information. You might want a brew for this. I've got quite a lot to show you. So let me just outline what it is I've got to, show, to talk to you about today. I've got some stitching. I've definitely got some stitching to show you and I should be doing that first of all. We've then got to have a little chat about the sampler guild. I promised you last week that I would enlighten you if you are not familiar with the sampler guild that runs here in the UK that you could access anywhere in the world. It doesn't have to be in the UK. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. And then I've got a reasonable amount of haul because a lot of my market purchases have come in. Um, I managed to get mine super, super quickly and I will tell you how I managed to get mine super quickly as well. So I hope you're having a lovely day. I'm going to start off by talking about these. Now, I put these in my Etsy shop and I had managed to get 120 of them from um, my supplier, who's the Button Queen. And you might have seen that she put a reel up showing exactly how they are made. And she had the ability to make 120 of them in this particular run. And they sold out in less than 24 hours. <laughs> the listing was due to run until the 22nd of March. Um, and like I say, it didn't make it didn't make 24 hours before they were all sold. So I shall be starting to post those out as soon as I possibly can. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a chat with her and see about when she's going to be able to do another run for me, um, which I will probably try and coordinate with another school holiday just so that I can be sure of getting the posting done efficiently. So you're probably going to be looking at late May or maybe the summer. It depends depends when she's got another window to do some more for me. So congratulations to those of you who got them. And I see that quite a few of you have ordered for um, gifts or for more than one person as well. So lots of these are going to be on their way. Lots of them head into the States. So as soon as I can, I'll put another run of those together and I'll let you know um, when that's coming up. But thank you to everybody who jumped on board and bought those really, really quickly. Right, what have I been stitching? Let me show you what I was stitching on today. Now I've had to, I've made another sort of different setup here, which involves a very sort of narrow pole. So if it starts wobbling, it's not the Blair Witch Project. It's just, you're not on quite a, a normal base as you would be. We're back up in the spare room. Um, I've managed to sort of fettle a little bit. Um, we've not been up here for a little while, mainly because I hadn't cleared away the Christmas things. It still had my Christmas backdrop and I just wasn't ready to sort that out. There was not enough brain space for sorting that out, but I've done it today, including tidying up the rest of the room because mum is coming to stay with us after next weekend. So that'll be fun. Next weekend, we're going to be at uh, the NEC. Actually, we're going to go to the Creative Crate and craft stitching show my bob thing that's on in the NEC next week. So let me show you what I've stitched on today. I was woefully behind with my own stitch along. Shocker. <laughs> so I did want to get some of this done. So this is where I'm up to now. So this is Winter Cottage. Is it Dots Winter Cottage? Does it tell me on the thing? A Cold Winter's Day. So nothing like that. Um, by Pink and Pumpkin. And this is where I am. I'm doing a silky, not a silky, a sulky conversion. A silky's a chicken. Um, a sulky conversion on 36 count. Um, so why I got, I'm guessing we call it mocha because on the back, it's vintage country mocker, so I just use the plain side. So I'm just about ready to put the snow on, fill in the roof, and then I've got the sort of there's lots of trees and a snowman down here. So I'm catching up. My plan was to do one every other month. So I started this one in January. So technically speaking, I need to get another one started this March, but I'd like to get this one finished first. Um, I did quite a good chunk today and it didn't actually take me that long. So if I just get my head down, then it shouldn't take too much longer to do. I've got an idea of how I'm going to finish all six, but I'm going to get a couple of them done first of all, and then see if I like that, that idea. 
Right, so that's the first thing that I've been stitching on. I shall file that down there. The second thing I've been stitching on is my Historic Sampler Company um, stitch along. And we received the second part of this at the beginning of this week, I think. So I haven't ironed this week, I'm afraid. And there is still a needle. Poking. Just half a stitch. You know those abandoned houses that people are always showing on sort of Instagram and TikTok? I feel like my stitching's like that sometimes. It's like I've just walked out on it. <laughs> so let me just fold my fabric in half so that you're not going to see too much light coming through so this is on the kit fabric they sent me a piece of 32 count white which i coffee and tea dyed and this is where i'm at now i think when i finish this i'm going to make it into a project bag that is my plan it's a really really lovely stitch but i have to say the way that they've done the, the stitch along with the first part and the second part, oh my God, that's made me go wrong so many times. They've cut literally, so it's like a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. So some of the motifs are cut in half and there's no overlap between the two charts. Oh, I've picked the, that bloody bird out two or three times. So if it wasn't such a lovely stitch along, I think I might have... Uh, been more cross with it but yeah really pleased with how that's coming along I like the colours they're not the colours that I would normally gravitate towards actually I'm not brilliant with kind of spring colours I have much of a darker heart than that but um I'm really liking this one as I said I've, I just keep seeing it finished as a project bag so that will be I think what is going to happen to it in the future and then lastly I have been stitching on my Norfolk, Susan Steele, who is there, that one. So if I just shift out the way a little bit, you can see her. This is my other um, one that's out, oh, which way, that way, one that's out of the frame at the minute. And it is, it's not sat right, okay? It is sat at 90 degrees to what it should be because the backboard, actually, if I just show you, it's probably easier. This is the one that I showed you a few few weeks ago, Eleanor Jarvis. Beautiful, isn't she? But the backboard is split there. And so if I put her the right way up, it puts too much pressure. It puts too much pressure on the bend. So she has to sit the other way up just for now. Anyway, I digress. This is where I'm up to with this one. So I haven't done a huge amount this week. I've started to put in that second row. Um, in fact, I think probably the only time I have worked on it is at the craft club that I go to um, on a Tuesday. And we had parents evening on a Tuesday. So I went there straight after parents evening and I seem to remember that I spent more of my time eating chocolate biscuits and drinking tea than I did stitching that day because I was a little bit brain dead. Um, so that's what I've stitched on this week. Projects coming together really really nicely. I've spent quite a lot of time um, sorting out my filing cabinet as well, putting charts back in the right places. Um, I've got a lot, I've got a lot. Um, the smalls section. So I'll tell you how I organise mine. It's probably the world's worst organisation system. But I have general small, general, medium and large. And my medium and large or my, my small to medium split comes about 100 by 100. So if it's less than 100 by 100, it'll go into the smalls. If it's more than 100 by 100, it'll go into the medium or large. So I have general, small and then general, medium and large. And then I have Halloween, small, a medium and large. I have Christmas, small, medium and large. And then I have samplers, small, medium and large. And that's pretty much how I've organised things. Um, it's not brilliant. It's not brilliant, but it kind of works. It kind of works. But I just keep looking at this sort of small section thinking, oh, I could really fancy cracking through a few of those. Um, 
but I also want to get some of the bigger ones done. It's the perennial problem, isn't it? Too much stitching, not enough time. Having to go to work and all that really puts a dent in your in your time, doesn't it? Just have a quick drink because it's flipping hot in here. <laughs> oh, right. So, what else have I got to share with you? I've got a freebie. I've got a freebie, which is another one from Melissa from Pinker and Punking Blogspot, which I nearly got right. Um, this one is called Pink House. And if you read her blog, it's actually every year she does a variation on a pink house um, in memory of, I think it was Dot. I think it was Dot. Uh, Dot's house. So every year she does a slightly different pink sampler, which is why I think I originally called that one Dot's house, because I think it's part of the same um, series. So I think there's four of them. Um, so yeah she's done a new one so i'll put a picture up if i haven't already and i'll put the link down below um she is so generous doing these um houses for us and the hashtag that we've been using for the sal is hashtag pns six houses 2024 sal because i'm trying to get six houses done in 12 months other people are going for 12 um it's entirely up to you other people are just pitching in and pitching out whenever they, whenever they fancy as they wish. Right, I have got some giveaways to talk about as well. So I'm going to do the giveaways first, then I'm going to talk a little bit about the Sampler Guild, and then I'm going to show you my haul, including the flip-throughs, because I've bought quite a few booklets, so we'll do those. Right, let's have a look at the giveaways. Now the giveaways come from the lovely Ruthie, from Crow's Feet Stitching. Now she has um, managed to release two beautiful samplers. She is a one woman dynamo. Now the first one um, has actually just come back from Nashville. Um, and is this one, Mary Jenkins, which is actually a Welsh sampler. Now, I seem to remember Mary was from Monmouth. Am I remembering this? Yeah, Monmouthshire. Now, the thing with Welsh samplers is you, you kind of know what a Welsh sampler looks like. I'm sure that most of you could identify a Welsh sampler. Um, the closer they get to the English border, and Monmouth is right on the border, the more like English samplers they become. So this one doesn't necessarily have the big birds and the big vases that you might expect, but it's also early as well, 1772. And the earlier you go back, the more they become like, more like English samplers as well. So you have got the sort of starts of like the really Welsh motifs that we see with the birds and the, and the vases, but it's not quite the big kind of folk art ones that I've shown you before. So that's a little bit of the sort of history of the Welsh samplers. The earlier they are, the closer to the border they are, the less they are like those big typical Welsh ones. But isn't she beautiful? I absolutely love this one. It's quite faded on the front, but the back colours are really, really nice as well. Um, let me go, if I can show you just that top bit there, you can see the back colours are much, much brighter. And of course, she's done a fabulous job of finding her and charting in colour. Just an amazing job. Amazing job. So that's the first one of Ruthie's releases. I'm going to show you them all and then I'll tell you what words to use so that you can decide which you want to enter for or you can enter for all of them. I have also discovered in my pile a revision sheet for digestion and the digestive system, which obviously failed to print in the middle of the week because it suddenly decided to come out with this. So this is the pillow or the cushion that Ruthie has done. So it takes the bottom part of Mary's sampler and 
has made it into a really lovely cushion. So fabulous, absolutely fabulous. So that's the second of her releases. The third one is a beautiful Norfolk called Maria Friston, 1802. And there she is, mostly cross stitch, but there is a little bit of freehand embroidery in the sort of archwork over these um, over these baskets. Now, I've spoken to um, Ruthie quite a lot about Maria Friston because Ruthie's not managed to find her. I've had a little look as well. I can't find her either. Um, trust me, if, if, if anybody can find her, Ruthie can find her. But I thought I'd have a little look and I couldn't find her either. She's a bit of an enigma. But Ruthie's got a reasonable idea of where she might be from. She's from Norfolk, but what sort of area based on kind of like the sampler layout and other similar samplers. And she spoke to me and she said that this sample had been really, really hard to actually chart because the linen actually changes count sort of halfway down. Um, the threads actually split. And so it's really, really hard to chart, but she's done a fabulous, fabulous job. So there is the original. She's a little bit threadbare, bless her, but she still survives, which is amazing. So there is Maria Friston, the sampler, and there is also Maria's drum based on the sort of linear cartouche panel here that's very, very common to um, Norfolk samplers. You see that quite a lot. So that is the drum with the deer on top. So I'm gonna make it really, really easy in terms of words. So if you'd like the drum, just say the word drum. If you'd like Maria, just say Norfolk, N-O-R-F-O-L-K. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I suddenly start to spell things and then get anxiety? If you'd like Mary's cushion, say cushion. And if you want Mary's big sampler, say, let's say Wales. So Wales, I'll try and remember now. Cushion. Did I say cushion? Yeah, I think I did. Norfolk drum. So you sit on a cushion in Wales and on a drum in Norfolk. So I'm going to leave, leave that for two weeks so that you've got plenty of time to enter if you're watching this video a little bit later on. So those are the new releases from Crow's Feet Stitching. I'll put all her information down below. She is very, very knowledgeable. So it's really worth reading all of the research that she puts into her work. She is, as I said, very, very knowledgeable and gave a talk at the Stitch in London Sampler weekend a couple of weeks ago. Right, the Sampler Guild. So I dug out my little membership badge, actually, that Linda bought me when I was at the Sampler uh, weekend last week, the week before. So that is my membership badge. I am officially a member. I've been a member for ages, but she just brought the badge. So let me tell you a little bit about the Sampler Guild and I'm going to just get my notes so I can insult my notes. So it was set up in 2001 and um, when I first met Linda, she told me the story of how she kind of set up the Sampler Guild. And it really was, people talk about having a calling and having, or having a, you know, a message that you've got to do this. This is what you need to be doing. And it was a bit like that with her. Um, she said that she she met this person in, I think it was in the v &A actually in London. And within a very short amount of time, she was over in America looking at samplers and then she was back and she set up the Sampler Guild because she just knew that she wanted to get the word out about samplers and she wanted to, to build a group of people who are interested in preserving samplers, stitching samplers, talking about samplers, obsessing about samplers, dreaming about samplers. And that's what she's done. So if you want to become a member of the Sampler Guild, it is £20 for one year or £30 for two years. 
It's like a bit of a no-brainer there. Um, and what do you get? You get Zoom meetings. There's usually a Zoom meeting every week, um, unless Linda's away. And you get lots of people joining from all over the world. People in Europe, people in America, um, people in the UK. And, you know, I don't necessarily want to name any names, but they are the names of people that you would expect to see reproducing samplers and, and speaking to you about samplers and being very knowledgeable about samplers. Some of the people that um, appear on the Zoom calls actually have their own websites which talk in depth about samplers. They are leading experts and world experts about them. So they're usually on a Wednesday night, sometimes on a Tuesday, but usually on a Wednesday. Excuse me, unless Linda's away. They organise other events, meetups, meet and, um, meet and stitches, just getting together um, all over the place. And they also do organise retreats. Um, there's one actually in April, which is sold out. Um, and away days, um, away trips. They've organised trips before. So it's really, really worthwhile. And just the amount of knowledge that is within a group of people that are interested in samplers is incredible. If you're looking for your tribe, th these are they, all in one place. Um, they, Linda is also involved, uh, one of the organisers of the Big Stitch. Um, and there is a shop associated with the Sampler Guild as well. Um, they books, linen, scissors, sampler charts, things like that. I've never met anyone quite like Linda. She is the most personable person. She's just lovely. She will talk to you like she's known you for 25 years. And she has a photographic memory when it comes to samplers. You can show her a sampler and say, what do you think about this? And she'll say, I remember that bird. I've seen that bird somewhere else. And probably within 24 hours, she'll have sent you a picture of that bird that's on your sampler that you're interested in and where it else appears. She's got the most incredible memory for samplers. So I would highly, highly encourage you to join the Sampler Guild. It is really, really worthwhile. Um, fabulous group of people. I've learned so much and I've met some really lovely people too. So definitely join them. Linda is also offering a free membership as a kind of giveaway to the channel she is offering a free membership so not only a free membership but she is also offering a copy of miss hazel new release by stacy nash so if you want to enter for a membership to the sampler guild and to win a copy of miss hazel they go together they're the same thing then you need to include the word squirrel. Let's go with squirrel. And then I'll know you want to be a member of the Sampler Guild and you also would get this chart as well. So include the word squirrel and we'll see where we get to with that. Two weeks and then I'll draw that one as well. New floss tubers. I'm going to talk about a couple of new floss tubers now. Uh, UK floss tubers. Excellent. Both done their first floss tubes in the last couple of weeks. So we've got... Butterfly Stitches slash Cotton and Clay, who is Laura, who is Butterfly Stitches on Instagram, but she runs Cotton and Clay that make needle minders. Um, she made the last needle minder for Stitch in London. She does lots and lots of beautiful things and she's taken the jump to do a floss tube as well. And there is also Cross Stitch Sarah, who a lot of you will probably know from retreats and meetups. She's very, very active in that sort of respect. So I've seen her probably two or three different retreats that I've been to um, and I don't go to that many. So yeah, very, very active in that. Lovely member of the community and she has decided to do a floss tube because she's got lots and lots of things to share. So I'll put the information down for those two and if you've got some time, you might want to check them out. Right, I'll just check my list because I do need a list for today. Right, let's have a look at my purchases. I have got my Nashville stack here, which I bought from uh, Jeff P. Smith on eBay, who you will probably know in the UK as Trudy Ann Designs that do quite a lot of the shows. Um, they were out in Nashville. They were live posting what they were buying. I was buying what they were live posting. And I think when they got back, they just put all my stuff in a big envelope and just 
sent it to me. So there is my Nashville stack. We'll go through that. I do have a couple of other purchases as well because it's been that sort of a week. So let's start off with my Stacey Nash purchases. Now you'll have seen one of these already because I just showed it to you, but I bought Miss Hazel as well. I'm pretty sure you'll have seen this all over social media because they are fabulous. So I bought Miss Hazel, I bought um, Bobbin, so it's the little mouse. I just love the little pin cushions that go with them. And I do have one or two little bobbins that I could use. And this one is Maggie May, who is a lovely little rabbit with her little, almost like a radish cushion. So it's recommending that you use 36 count. And this one will be about three inches tall. This one will be about six inches tall. And this one will be about seven inches tall. So, cannot wait to get onto those. I love the Animal Cracker series. I've made one, so, <laughs> but I've got lots of charts, but I've made one. What else did I get? I also picked up this one, My Scissors, My Rules, by Heartstring Samplery. Love that one. I picked up the two Blackbird books because you have to buy all the Blackbird. So we're gonna have a look through this one first of all. This one's called Moments of Glad Grace. This, a lot of the work in this book is based on this sampler by Mary Griffiths. So the first one is this one, which is that sampler with the colors kind of reimagined. Those other little motifs are present on there. Let me show you back to the original but they're very, very faint. So um, they've either looked at the colours on the back, but I think there's been a little bit of reimagining going on there as well. So there's that one. There is also the button box top, which features the bird. And there is also Sing the Joyful Bird, which is another smaller piece taken from the sampler. And lastly, Acts of Goodness, the flower. So a little flower pin cushion there, finished beautifully. So that's the four projects in there. And then there are three projects in Thy Love More Strong. So, the first one is called Thy Love More Strong, which is the sampler that's pictured on the front, which says Margaret McVeigh on the inside. Then we have another box top. This is called On the Alder Bow. And then we have a little drum finish called the Strawberry Jar which is lovely. So those are the three projects that you get in there. So there's the front and there's the back. So obviously I had to get those, couldn't not. And then the rest of my purchases were Stacey Nash ones. No, they weren't. They were Teresa Koga ones. I'll tell you what, this week, if my head wasn't glued on, it would have run away in disgrace, I think. So I picked up this one. This is not a market release for this year. This is a market release for last year, but I couldn't get it at the time. And then it just one of those was one of those ones that even though I absolutely loved it, I just sort of kept putting it off and putting it off. So when they showed that they'd picked up some of these market, I jumped on it really quickly. So those are the three projects that you can see on the front there. And then I picked up this one called Hello Spring. Now I'll show you the projects in here. I do actually own most of these projects in here but I'll tell you why I had to buy it. So a lot of these have come through Teresa's Patreon but not all of them. So 
This one is called Cottage Bouquet. And next we have Cottage House. And then we have Home Sweet Home. And we have Buzzing of the Day. I love that bottom border. Really like that. And then we have Strawberry Delight. I love that one. I liked that one when it came through Patreon, but I just never got around to stitching it. And then we have Stitcher Strawberries, which I love. And Sweet Wren. And last but not least, we have Cherry Jubilee. There's Cherry Jubilee. Now, this is the reason I bought this book. I couldn't not. Why? Because I stitched that. <laughs> Look, even got my name in a Teresa Koga book. That's amazing. <laughs> Teresa had seen that I'd stitched it. Um, I know she was working on a model herself, but I think she ran out of time. Um, so she reached out to me and asked whether she could use the photograph of my stitch um, in the book. And it would have been helpful if I brought it up, wouldn't it? But I haven't, it's downstairs. So I got my name in the Teresa Kogut book. So I had to buy it. I had to buy it. Um, and yeah, that's my market purchases. Although not quite, because I did go back and ordered two others. Um, one was a needlework press um, sampler, which I really like, the one that's vertical. I'll put a picture of it up there. And I can't remember what the other one was. That's bad, isn't it? I'll put another picture of it up there because it will remind me what I've, uh, what I've got coming as well. And she also sent me this little Victorian pin box, which was like a complimentary um, from Summer House Stitchworks. So she picked one of those up for me, which was lovely. And from a D stash, I got We Are The Sampler Makers, which I don't think I own. Although having gone through my charts and put things away this afternoon, there were quite a few in there, which I would have sworn I don't own. <laughs> so um, yeah, if I find I've got a duplicate of this, there might be a giveaway, but I don't think I ever bought this one. But as I said, when I was putting them away, I was like, I oh, don't remember buying that. Didn't realise I had that. And then this one, Not Forgotten Farm Samplers, Halloween Queen. So it says it's good to be the queen. And I just love that one. I love a little dress with a tree in the middle. I always pick up these whenever I see them, Not Forgotten Farm, because they are quite hard to find in the UK in paper copy. And the PDFs are quite expensive. So I picked up those two on a stash unload. I bought this today um, because I saw it um, advertised. This is by Magnolia Nest Designs, who have got an Instagram account and the name is escaping me at the moment. I'm going to put it along the bottom. Um, so Magnolia Nest Designs, does it say? No, it's just got the name of the design company on it. Um, yeah, I'll have to put the Instagram name on the bottom. So this is called Spring in Wales. And you can make this beautiful long um, sort of row that you could turn into a drum. You could turn it into just a long, thin stitch. It's really, really nice. So you've got a, a guide to the design, why she's chosen each of those things. Now... I'm going to have to struggle with this one because you've got uh, a 12th, uh, 16th, 17th century Welsh farmhouse, which is the yellow one. You've got the freshwater fish, which is native to Wales. Now, I haven't, I need to go and 
take these words to my Welsh speakers at school so that I don't make an absolute ass of myself when I say them. So some very special Welsh, Welsh-ish. Um, the otter, which I'm all right with. Wild garlic. We have loads of wild garlic. We have loads of wild garlic. Every year I make wild garlic pesto by the bucket load, just from wild garlic that's in and around the lanes up here. Um, the amount you pay for wild garlic in the shop, I can pick it by the kilo around here. It's amazing. Um, a wood warbler. Uh, the daffodil, obviously, and a red grouse common on the Welsh moorlands. So I loved that. She has also done um, a spring in England as well, which I know has got a badge on it and I think bluebells maybe. Um, so looking forward to stitching that up. It looks a lovely, lovely stitch. And then I got these two boxes. Hmm. Now this is from West Green Loft Yarns. Now uh, I've joined their Fabric of the Month Club. So this is my first one and this is how it comes in the in the box. Now I have a sneaky look at the colour but I wanted to show you how it came in the packaging and this is what it looks like. This one's called Bark. I've got a 32 count fat quarter so let's have a look and see what it looks like. Isn't that a beautiful colour? really really attractive colour could make a nice background for a Welsh spring drum mm. and it smells it smells really nice too so that's my first it's not my first piece of linen I bought another piece of linen from them before but that's my first of the fabric of the month club and then I bought their spring box as well. Now, I've had a sneaky peek in here, but I can't, I can't remember because I poked it all back in to the packaging so that I could show you what it looks like. So let's have a look together as to what it actually looks like. As I said, I couldn't wait for a sneaky peek, but I'll put it back very carefully. So these are all the things that are contained inside. So there is a little hoop um, somewhere in here. There must be a magnet as well because I could just feel it attracting. So what have we got? Oh, we've got one of those, they call them orange peel clips. So they're basically, um, they're basically used when you've got a frame and you um, want to sort of tuck in your excess fabric you use one of those little clips now I stitch in hand so I don't really use these but they are also good let me tell you what else they're good for actually now this is a sulky I just happen to have it by the window sulky have this little and most of them actually do have this I've just broken that oops let's try that again because there's one on the top as well Sulky have this little, um, I'll do it more gently this time, <laughs> brute force and ignorance. They have this little bit at the top that you can pop up. And then if you've got a loose thread, you can, let me get my loose thread, wrap it round and then click it down. Okay. But these little orange peel things are also really good. If you don't have a, um, cotton reel that clips like that or you're like me and wreck it then you can use them to keep stop all your cottons fraying there we go <laughs> and then we have got a little needle minder in here oh it's so cute it's a little tiny rabbit isn't that lovely a little tiny rabbit pop that on there because that's a little bit of metal what else have we got some wild scottish raspberry hand and body lotion i'll give that a whirl and then we've got two lovely packets so this first one is from my lovely friend christina from wild cyrus naps she designed this little chart to go in here so it's the bunny 
and then you've got a little carrot that you can make to go with it and it comes with the little pom-pom that you're going to need for the tail so that was one of the projects in and then this is the second project by Cherry Hill Stitchery. So let's have a look and see what we've got in here. It's got quite a bag of stuff. So let's see if I can take it out and not lose everything. That is all finishing things, so I'll come back to that. So there's the chart. Bunnies love carrots, it says. In here, we've got the DMC. Lovely spring colours. I'm about to start this tonight while I'm uh, doing this video. Then we've got some white linen. Looks like 32 count on first glance. And then some gingham which you're going to use for the finishing. So it finishes into like a little flat fold like that. And then we have the wired ribbon to make the big bow and a little button, covered button, to go in the centre of the bow. Some cording, which I think is going around the outside of the finish. And then we have a little tiny carrot with a bit of sticky pad on the back for probably putting on the, where is it? It's not on there, but it'll definitely go on there. And a needle, which is excellent because I lost a needle today. It binged and I have no idea where it went. Not a clue. And then my last little bit of haul because I needed another one of these, but I just loved this. So it's a sort of a dish shaped rather than a round um, flower frog because I felt I needed one to fit my gold scissors. Now, these ones, Chris and Ness bought me for Christmas. They're a bit more heavy duty rather than little tiny ones, but they go in there nicely. And then I've got a couple of little pairs of those. Nice pair of gold Kelms cots. Nice little pair of those gold ones. I forget which they are. They're the ones with the M on the front. And those ones, which I think are the hemline ones. So nothing really expensive, just lots of nice scissors. And then this fits inside the dish there, like that. I thought oh, it was just nice and sunny. Amber glass, just perfect for all my little pairs of gold scissors. I'm going to put them all back in here now so I don't lose them. Try not to break anything. There we go. Perfect. Love, love, love. Right. Well, that's it for me. Uh, I think you'll probably see there's a little bit of editing gone on here because I've forgotten a few things and had to go back. But never mind, we're all friends here. I shall see you next week when I'll have Tales of the NEC. Stay classy, Stitchers.